Perfect. By the way, how have you been, Chris? I've been great. Um, really good. Just busy. Busy? I know. You are a busy man right now. You are a hot topic. <laughs> For all of my listeners, um, I have Chris Bledsoe. I'm very honored to have him on the podcast. Um, uh, I first came across your story. Your story stood out to me as something very different than what I have heard a lot in the UFO, in the alien community. And uh, what really stood out to me was that you know, I've been following this community for a really long time. Um, and there has been a lot of stories, a lot of videos, a lot of, you know, talks and stuff like that, but not a whole lot of supporting evidence to kind of really back up these claims. So a lot of people have remained kind of skeptical in this community. Um, the narrative and the agenda around it has changed a lot since like the government has come out and started talking about it. Um, so when I came across your story, it really fascinated me um, because your story just seemed a lot different than what I have seen out there before. Um, but before we dive in, I want to give my listeners a little introduction of who you are. So if you can, go ahead and just introduce yourself and kind of explain a little bit about who you are and where my listeners can find you. Okay, um, my name is Chris Bledsoe. I'm, uh, I'll be 62 years old next month. I'm a Libra, by the way. <laughs> and, uh, I'm married 40 years this year Amazing. to the same woman, uh, happily. And we have four beautiful children and one grandchild. Um, I was a builder in the building business for all my life, mostly. My dad was a builder before me. My wife's dad was a builder. Between them, they built hundreds of houses a year um, for sale. My wife's father built 350 a year. That's the amount of building business experience I have been involved with. I became a commercial rated pilot, uh, multi-engine, twin, commercial instrument, and all of those. And... Um, so I have, uh, I'm not just a builder. I have plenty of other skills and I have something beeping at me. I have to shut <laughs> okay. it off. Okay. Um, okay. So I'm sorry about that. It's okay. So I've been, uh, I, I've been a builder most of my life. That's my main profession. And uh, I'm retired now. I'm medically retired from rheumatoid arthritis and I'm just unable to, and recovering from that, by the way, but to get not to get into two. Well, let me do this again. Someone doesn't I'm want sorry. us to have this conversation, Chris. <laughs> I, know, I have this thing that was beeping over there. I had to shut it completely off, all of it. But, uh, yeah, so that's me. I live in North Carolina, born and raised here. Um, I'm not. I'm between Raleigh, Durham, and which is the capital, and Wilmington, which is on the coast. I'm right in the middle there, and um, yeah, just uh, just doing my thing as a dad and a grandpa. Yeah, I love that because you have a very interesting backstory of how all of your story began and. It began kind of with this whole construction business, right? You were going through, and if anybody, and, and I'm going to presume, I'm going to kind of skip over some stuff, uh, you know, just so my listeners understand, because there is so many intricate details to your story. Um, but I really want to kind of skip to a, a part where we get into really like where things start ramping up and where the meat of the story is that I feel like you know, my listeners would be really interested in listening to. But if people are very, you know, want to know more about the backstory of Chris and his first encounter with, um, you know, what we're going to be talking about today, then I highly suggest Chris just wrote a book and it just came out. It's called The UFO of God. And 
it's a page turner. I read the book probably in about two days. Um, I actually listened to it on audio and then I also listened to it on the book. Um, there are so many intricate details that, you know, I've listened to podcasts and I would have never known about those things if I didn't read your book. Um, so if anyone's interested in that, highly suggest checking out the UFO, UFO of God um, by Chris Bloodsoe. And it's actually, what is it like a number one Amazon bestseller in multiple categories right now? Yeah, it's been that way for seven months. I published in February and um, it has been running in the uh, the top spot in and out for of like six or seven categories for nearly seven months. And it's, it's, it's done way better than I ever thought it would. And uh, everybody, the, the reviews on it are mostly five star and people are saying that after they read this thing, they begin to see the phenomenon themselves. Mm -hmm. And that's a pretty interesting thing there. So if, you, if you're interested, you can go to my website, ufoofgod.com. And there you can uh, find an Amazon link to buy the book. But moreover, there are testimonials there. And we're creating a schedule to where I'll be appearing, you know, conferences and book signings and so on. But yeah, really exciting. That's amazing. I mean, congratulations for all the success on that, because I, I definitely think you deserve it. Your story is, you know, one thing that I will say is um, in this world there or in the UFO community, um, you know, there are a lot of skeptics and there's a lot of different narratives and stories out there around, you know, what these things are, if they're evil, um, if they are good. Um, you know, especially when it comes to, you know, Christians and people in religions that, you know, view these things and what their own personal beliefs are as well. So when I was reading your story, you know, you come from a very religious background and you yep. were very religious before you had your first encounter with the phenomenon. Um, yep. Go ahead and give me a brief understanding uh, or a brief kind of summary of how this whole thing started with you. Well, and this is the most important part. So the listener can understand what it is here. Um, in 2001, I was building uh, really strongly. Uh, I had a hundred homes uh, a year we were building my wife and I, and at that time when the world trade center disaster happened, um, uh, in 2001, September, I had 72 houses for sale and in a military market that completely quit buying homes because they were told here, don't buy nothing. You may be overseas somewhere. So all the, the, the sales quit. And there started a, a long um, train wreck. I watched it happening because the interest then were was 8% on on the money on borrowed money seven and a half eight percent which on 15 million dollars you can figure that's how much money i had uh invested and the interest to the banks were ungodly six seventy eighty thousand a month so all my uh, 20 years of building and finance just was going out the window and I had Crohn's disease extremely bad for 17 and a half years. I suffered with it, uh, debilitating. And it ended up uh, with me having a near-death experience and had to sell the business in 04, 05. We sold it in 04, it closed in 05. But I was unable to work at that time and um, just sick in the bed for two years. I'd get up in the morning and I'd go back, I'd go to the bathroom. So I was there. If you understand Crohn's disease, it's the inflammation of the bowels and all. So I had 20, 25 times a day in the restroom, as bad as that sounds, it was, it's what was happening. And um, so I was forced to sell. And now here we fast forward to 07. I'm just now recovering from a near death and unable to, to work because of this Crohn's still. And I was at the end of my rope. I had nothing left. I, I had lived, lived a, a, a million dollar home with a pool in the back and 
four happy kids going to private schools and all to where I am. Some were going to private, but I am uh, now faced with no home and unable to feed my children, even school lunches at school. I had to apply for free lunch. Wow. And so you imagine at 45 years old, uh, restricted from being able to work to all that. And um, so my dad talked me and we moved next door to him, had to sell our home and move. And he talked me into going to take on a project for him. Uh, a rather large house on the coast two hours away in October of 06. So I went down there and took a crew of men to build it and came back in December, all but done. New Year's came along and I sent the guys back down to the beach to do the punch list and collect the last 10% of the money. That's what happened. So they come home on January the 8th of 07 with a check at lunch saying we're finished boss. Uh, let's celebrate. Can we go fishing or something? So I did. And that day would be the change forever for me. Uh, and it's why I'm here today. It's why I wrote the book. Because I took these guys fishing along with my oldest son. And uh, they're grown men, right? We're sitting on the bank of the Cape Fear River fishing. I walk away. Uh, I wasn't. I wasn't fishing. I could care less about it. My mind was stressed really bad. Of course, I didn't let them know that. But I kept using the excuse, I'll see you later. I'm going to walk in the woods while you guys fish. Or I'm going to walk up to the field. And when I did, when I went up there at 10 after 5 in the afternoon, after we had a fire going and they're situated, I walked up that hill and I came back a different person. I came back four hours later thinking 20 minutes had passed, walked up on three huge balls of fire that were uh, about 300 yards away and 100 feet in the air, 150 feet. How but big the were these balls it, of fire? If you could, There were 40 feet around. There oh, were 40 wow. foot or bigger, 50 foot orange, tangerine orange balls of fire. I reported them to where they looked like the setting sun. Which strangely, the Fatima kids did the same thing mm -hmm. in uh, back way back when they had the, the appearance of the lady. Mm -hmm. They, the whole community said it looked like the setting sun came out of the sky. Well, I had three of those, and um, but the the most important thing for everybody to understand is I was desperate and I was crying out to God. I was born and raised a Baptist and uh, married a Pentecostal holiness girl, which if anybody knows that faith, it is, it's a very strict um, faith. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the same thing as Christianity, but they're much stricter. Right. They don't believe in cutting their hair. They don't believe in wearing short sleeve shirts for men. Even that's vanity. Don't buy on Sunday. You, you, it, when I first joined it, they uh, they fussed about television. You, you shouldn't even have a TV. So, but it's gotten a little more liberal along the way. But can imagine, uh, I'm crying out to God, help me. What do I do? Take me. I don't want to live anymore, but I don't want to leave my children. Help me. What do I do? I was that desperate. And that's when these balls of fire came out of the sky. And they never left. From that point forward with me, uh, and if you read the book, you'll get the whole story about what happened, the details there, how it followed me home, my son, and how it's still here today, how um, you saw it with me, mm -hmm. and uh, dozens and dozens, hundreds, hundreds of people come here. Uh, sometimes 25 and 30 at the time and get their lives changed. I had a guy from NASA here uh, right after you left, a couple of days later, came all the way from Houston. He went back a, a different human being. Wow. And so we have proof. I have proof. Yes. Unlike anyone else does on this planet, nobody has the documented proof that I have. And I can share it with you live yes. or I can share it with you on video or whatever. And that's and witnesses. Go ahead, Chris. Right. Just many witnesses, science, scientists, government officials, 
and many of them, and you can read on my website, the testimonials from government officials, the highest in the land. Some uh, one particular one that wrote the forward of my book was the director of operations for the CIA. Mm -hmm. That's how big and up, you know, how far it goes up the totem pole. So that's, a, that's honestly why your story caught my attention was because you know, I had been following obviously the UFO community for a, a long time and a lot of people will either post videos mm -hmm. or they will show certain things and a lot of stuff is just very unverifiable. And then you also don't have people interacting with this phenomenon like you are. And when I listened to your story on a podcast, that led me to to watch your uh, episode on the History Channel. So you were featured in Beyond Skinwalker Ranch, episode eight on the History Channel, right. if anybody wants to watch that. So I hopped on that because I was like, I want to see more about this guy's story, if there's any legitimacy. Because you know how shows are, they will say, you know, oh my gosh, this crazy thing's going to happen, but you don't really see anything at all through the whole episode. It's like, they have a cliffhanger every single time before a commercial and you come back and there's just, you know, everything's a big nothing burger. And so I watched your episode and I was so fascinated because you seemed to be able to summon these things on command. It's not like you were waiting for an experience to happen. You were having an a connection with this phenomenon and it wasn't just like one thing happened we got a blimp on the screen there were people who were there that were studying you and they were experiencing the phenomenon with you and at yeah. one point and this is where it kind of was the kicker for me because you can have video evidence all you know and people can manipulate it whatever but you they had cooked an EEG up to your brain and they wanted to study how your brain was interacting, you know, during this phenomenon occurring. And you didn't even have to talk. You didn't have to do anything. You just sat there very calmly with this machine hooked up to your brain. And all of a sudden you would know when this phenomenon would come and you would just point to it. And the readings on the EEG would your brain rather than it being like oh my gosh i'm experiencing this phenomenon you know people would normally get excited your brain went into an automatic flow state a very deep mm -hmm. meditative state um which normally you can only do if you've been a monk and been meditating for a very long time but your brain mm -hmm. automatically goes into this state when these orbs or these phenomenon come around you and not only yeah. that you have an emotional response. So it's like you're having an emotional connection with this phenomenon. And then what also got to me to verify what you were talking about and how you have communication with these beings, there were the language aspects of your brain that were lighting up during that time too, but you weren't having a conversation, but it was like you were having a conversation with this phenomenon and it was all being tracked and we had the video supporting evidence. We had, you know, them studying your brain at the same time. There was like so many aspects to it that that showed me. I was like, oh, my gosh, this there's something really going on here. And oh, yeah. then I heard you lived in North Carolina and I <laughs> live in North Carolina. And so I started looking more into I got your book, read your book, all that stuff. And uh, I pretty much was like you know, I'm, I want to experience this. If, if this can happen, then there's a good, if he's being able to summon these things and there's a good potential that I might be able to experience something if I come and visit you. And lo and behold, you were so kind, you were kind enough to allow me and my boyfriend to come and experience the sky with you. I don't want to get into that yet because I want to talk about this experience that happened about five years ago, which kind of changed everything. Um, but before the five year mark, um, you weren't really able to capture these entities, correct? On like mm -hmm. video or any of that kind of stuff. What happened five years ago to change this whole thing? 
Well, it's not. It wasn't five years ago. Okay. It, it was 2012, which was five years after gotcha. the initial when I lost time. When the orbs came out of the sky, the, these balls of fire. Um, I came home excited to tell the world what had just happened. Oh my Lord, you won't believe what happened to me. I had Crohn's disease. Now I don't. I had never had another day sickness since then not no digestive problems before that it was uh like i said the bathroom 15 20 25 times a day it's according to how it was flaring right pain and back and forth to the hospital and where they'd numb my insides to keep me from being in such pain so all that went away the next morning when i woke up after that first night uh, I noticed I wasn't feeling sick and and it was always an indicator I get up I feel sick I got to take medicine hope it makes me feel better I hope I have a good day and that was every day of my life but that day I didn't feel any of the normal symptoms so I didn't take my medicine and by the next day it, it just everything seemed better and I never took another pill after 17 and a half years of doing this so you'd have thought the world would have wanted to see what had happened. Mm -hmm, I was on the river. Yeah, it was a miracle. Crohn's I was praying. God. Right. I was praying that day. God, help me. I wasn't calling on aliens. I wasn't calling on some, you know, something from some other world. I was crying out to God, help me. I, I'm, I'm having suicidal thoughts. I don't want to live. I'm sick. I can't go on like this. I was at the lowest point in my life and these balls of fire came, took me away for four hours. It was a manhunt that night. Everybody saw him, everybody in the group, my son included. Uh, we all saw more than just that three. There was a whole crowd of them that ended up blocking our path. So it's, it's, it's incredible um, what happened. And if you read the story, I, I think you'll get a lot there, but, so the whole community rejected me. The church in, in, immediately, you're playing with the devil. Oh, it's got to be the devil, you know. And, and, and that's just the, the belief systems limit what people can really understand in this world. You know, I would have might have thought that if it hadn't happened to me. But I'm saying, but I wasn't praying to the devil. I was praying to God. Does the devil come when you pray to God? Well, they didn't want to hear it. So they basically ostracized me from church. And to this day, I have people that turn their back on me when I walk in the room because their belief system, which is okay. I feel sorry for them now. So five years, fast forward five years to 2012. The phenomenon never left. It came to my house. It was in my house. It was outside of my house. It was, it, it was, it was interacting with my wife and my children. They were blown away. My wife was living in two worlds, having to to be in the church group, mm -hmm. right? And hear them talking about their other husband is playing with the devil. And they would come to my house with holy water and all this. And it was creating a major problem with my children even. They were telling my children that their dad is, is in line with the devil, this kind of stuff. So, um, it got to where the school, even the teachers at the school and the children in the classrooms were laughing at my children. Wow. Because I let MUFON, an organization that you report UFOs to in 08, do a little documentary. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're going to vindicate you. We're going to, we're going to tell the world, this is the best thing for you. We can prove that you were, you know, you're having this experiences and, and they did a hack job on me. They, they lied to me. They made me look crazy and uh, like a liar and all this. And so that turned the whole community into me being a laughing stock. Mm. Right. And so my children would come home crying. My little girl was 10 years old in elementary school, come home with big tears in her eyes. And so I was ready. You know, if I would had a temper, I would have wanted to choke some people back then. That's how bad it was. It, it had gotten. But so on Easter of 2012, Saturday night, 
I'd had about all I could stand of seeing my children suffering anymore. My boys, three of them, 14, 15, 16, trying to date girls and being laughed at at school. It put one of them in a complete shell, withdrawn, changed his life, ruined my oldest son. So now it's the people that did this. It wasn't the phenomenon. It wasn't the orbs. It was the freaking people around me in the community that was creating this trouble for my family. Even trying to split us up at times, cl- claiming that your dad, you shouldn't be around him. He's playing with the devil. So I'm venting right now, right? This is how, how it got. So I wasn't able to take any photos, any videos, but I could see it. I could share it with my family, my kids and all. But outside of that, and I wanted desperately to prove to my mother and my father and and different people that I'm not lying about it. And so I walked out the door on Easter that night and I shouted to the heavens, I'm done with you. You, Leave me alone. Don't come back. Why are you here? Why did you take me? Why did you heal me to leave me in a worse shape than I'm in now? I'm not happy about this. I don't appreciate it. So I'm venting to the sky. You know, I know they're there. I see them. They're real. And my family knew it. So I go to bed and I wake up at three o'clock in the morning to this loud sound arise. It was a manly voice. I was led outside to a location on my property that's very well talked about in the book where other experiences had happened. And next thing I know, I'm in the presence of this strong wind just came out of the forest and hit me so strong. It wasn't like all the woods and the whole place was wind blowing. It came out of a localized spot, a hole opened up. And out of that hole came a charging, a huge cow. Wow. I live out in the country, but there's no cows out there, right? Not in, not in the last 15, 20 years. And so it blew me over. And to my back, I hit the ground. This is all in the book. When I roll over, I'm facing the other way. I'm trying. I hit the ground in one second. I'm on my knees to run because I didn't know where this cow had gone to. It just came out of the forest into my vision and it scared me. But the weird thing is I knew when it went over me, I could see through it. It looked translucent. Long story short, when I get to my knees to run, there's no more cow there. There's a, a glowing, most beautiful woman I'd ever seen. And she was hovering about three feet off the ground, glowing this soft white color, bluish white, the ground around her. And I was in her circle. I was six feet from her, maybe seven feet. On my knees, her chin, her feet are about my chin height. I'm sitting on my knees and my butt is on the back of my leg. So my chin is about three feet off the ground, I guess. And that's how high she was. Did she look human? Yeah, hundred percent. Like a full this human? hundred percent is me or you. Yep. Wow. But she was floating. She wasn't on the ground. And her dress was long and white, uh, sparkling, moving like a Roman looking pleats all the way down, had a collar around her neck and her sleeves went out to her hands and to her feet, her dress went to her feet. She was barefoot. She had translucent golden hair. Wow. Uh, Not really translucent, but this golden looking hair. It was, it was incredible. Blue eyes. She looked at me and she said, you know why I'm here. This is your burden you have to bear. So I know exactly why she was there. Because when I had been taken for the first five years, the very night they took me, they put it in my head, you've got to tell the world. That's why I never would quit talking about it. I had to tell it. As much as uh, ridicule as I got, I kept telling it. And it just caused all this blowback. So I'd come to my limit. I'm going to quit. The lady stepped in and said, no, you're not going to quit. You've got a burden you must bear. You've got to tell this story. And if you do, I will help you. I will be there for you throughout this whole thing. And I will allow you to film us. 
and share our presence with others. And let me tell you something. You've seen my phone, right? Mm -hmm. I have 17,500 photos and videos on this cell phone alone, and I've downloaded several. But it all started in 2012. Yeah. Immediately, I started getting photos and videos and able to share it with groups of people. Come to my house, 25 people. Orbs would start appearing. And uh, it's never quit. It's only grown. It's grown tremendously, exponentially. So since that time, um, and, you know, when people hear that personally, sometimes it can sound just like super sensational, right? You're almost like in your own mind, it's so hard for you to believe that that could happen because we've never seen anything like it before in our lives, right? Yeah, right. And kind of in my mind, when I was hearing your story, I was like, this just like sounds so sensational. I'm having a hard time wrapping my mind around it. But you presented so much evidence. And when I came to see you, in my own mind, I was like, you know, I've never experienced um phenomenon directly to where it's like I can't rationalize it in my brain um, I feel like a lot of people experience certain things but then they can rationalize it away in their mind as like you know I'm tired or saw it on the side of my eye or something like that um, so I've never experienced anything where I can definitively say this happened right and so when I came to visit you I wasn't expecting anything. I was kind of like, if this happens, this is going to be amazing. This will be life changing for me because I am a skeptic. And I have always wondered, you know, um, if this stuff is real. And so when I came to came out there and visited you, um, which, by the way, thank you so much for even just allowing us to come and do that, you know, because you you probably get bombarded by people all the time wanting to come to your house and experience um, the phenomenon. But when we went there, you showed me some of the most unbelievable footage that I've never seen before, you know, that you've never even shared with the public. Um, And some of the most fascinating things, I'm going to bring up some photos that I took off of your Instagram because you had taken, you you've captured like pictures of these orbs. They're like balls of light that come, but these balls of light are entities, right? According to you, they're, they're actual beings. And when you, according to what kind of orb, there are two different kinds. Okay. And, And we can get into that later, but there are orbs around us, around us. And, and I shared some of that with you that have our loved ones there, mm-hmm. our animals. I have great pictures of people and animals in these orbs. They are around us all the time. Sometimes I can get thousands in one photo. But then there are celestial beings that are up here that come all the way down and gotcha. surround us. Sometimes, right. So they're separate yep. from that. Completely. Yeah, for sure. So I want to share with my audience, if you're watching on Rockfin, um, you'll be able to see this video or if you're watching on YouTube as well, but you'll be able to see some of the pictures that Chris had took. He's posted it onto his Instagram. You can, you can follow him on Instagram as well. And he posts a ton of videos and pictures as well of what he captures um, because you, he does have encounters regularly. Um, like nightly it's every, it's every day yeah yeah and so yeah. this is what really fascinated me this is something i hadn't seen before but you take these pictures of these orbs and then afterwards you take a look at the picture and you see these faces or these animals within the pictures so i have three different images of these orbs um and if you see here, you can kind of see. So tell me what I'm looking at here, Chris. Well, um, clearly the orange one up top is some sort of uh, critter. I don't know what it is, but it's a li- it's something alive because it was looking at me when I took the picture of it. Mm-hmm. And there were a hundred other orbs around it. And it was ground level. And there were a whole group of people there when I took that. 
the uh, bottom one, the gray and white one, I write about that in the book. And I was down at Cape Canaveral, uh, had been almost a week at Lit Mission Control. And you'll find out if you read my book, you'll see that um, even the CIA admits that there's nobody studied as much as I am in the whole world when it comes to this stuff. I am studied by the government more than anyone. Wow. And it's ongoing. It's not something new. I'll be, I'll be um, doing some more brain studies in November. I can't say where, but it will be for the next season on the History Channel probably. Um, but we're always studying this and there's always scientists, but long story short, my dog was run over and killed while I was in Florida. She got loose and went out and got in the highway and was killed at the end of my driveway, stepped out in the road and the car hit her running 60, 50, and she never knew she was dead. I was scheduled to come home Sunday night. About eight or nine o'clock. I was going to leave that morning from Cape Canaveral and drive home. But I had been delayed three days it's down there. I was tired of being down there, but I, I had to be. And so Saturday night, um, I left about five o'clock and drove all night. Never told my family that I was going to surprise them at 830 Sunday morning. And when I drove off of the main road onto my driveway, I felt this dog. I mean, you know, I'm very close to animals and animals come around me. You've seen the ducks and the birds, hundreds of them will fly right up. Wild mm -hmm. ones even that come around me. This all happened since the phenomena in 07. I used to be a hunter, bear hunter, deer hunter. I've hunted all over the country uh, in the world record books for you know, it's one of the largest bears in North America, which I don't hunt anymore. I quit that after this happened. That was one of the major transformations. So I felt her spirit. I knew she was dead the minute I drove off the road onto my driveway. I drove up to the front door, got out, and my wife and my children were so afraid to tell me because they didn't want to ruin my trip. I was involved with NASA, um, with scientists and so on. So they were going to tell me that night when I got home. But when I opened the front door, my wife was laying at the front door asleep on the couch. She was just sitting there, uh, slept up there. And um, I looked at her, and she opened her eyes. I said, what happened to my dog? I know she's dead. And she freaked out. What do you mean? I said, I know she's dead. What happened to her? My children began to get out of bed, tell me what happened. They buried her in the backyard. So that night, uh, or the next night, I think it was, that uh, I went out to her grave and I just had to, uh, I, I, I held a candle in my hand and told her, you know, to, to follow the light, come to the light. You know, I'll be with you again. I'm talking to this dog like that. And suddenly this orb comes up above her grave and I was able to take that picture right Which there. is this orb right here. And for the yeah, people listening just on audio, um there's a it's a circular gray orb but it's very clear you can see it inside of the orb the it's outline the of a dog yeah yeah um, face eyes nose mouth the whole thing yeah it's it's undeniable when you look at it yeah the green one there i have no idea who that is other than um it, it appears to be a woman or a person of some sort um, and, and I have lots of those, a lot of them. And that was in the days I was taking these in 2012 when um, all I had was a little $59 Sony Instamatic pocket camera. Didn't even have a good cell phone. And so I went about after the lady came, I went and bought the camera because she said, I'm going to help you. So I began to, to, I got me a professional camera, a $50 one rather than a, a a five, uh, what do you call it? iPhone five. Mm -hmm. What I had back then, but um, I began to pile, compile data, and that data brought the government. The, the 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 experience with the lady brought the government. It brought the Vatican. It brought a lot of people uh, linked to the Vatican wow. or other, you know, agencies and. 
would then, uh, after five years of being ridiculed and in total darkness, unable to 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 share it or take a photo, two weeks after that, I was um, everything started to change. Within a year, I'm in Washington D.C. Uh, helping with a person that was dying. And he's in the book. You can read about him. One of the one of the most prominent families in Washington D.C. Their their son had mitochondrial DNA disease. He couldn't eat. Never could eat. He had a feeding tube. President Obama uh, met him personally. The whole family. I mean, they're just. You know, this guy was appointed by Clinton to do what he does. His dad was. And so, um, you know, I was out of my league friend calls me and says, we got a person that's dying and he's been given a make a wish. He has less than a year to live. He's on a feeding tube. Can you help him? Well, it's 4th of July. Um, I can't go now. I can go next week. No, what's more important? This is in the book. So the next day I'm on a plane to New uh, to Washington and a driver picks me up and delivers me to this house in Arlington with all the flags and, you know, the 4th of July stuff. And I was terrified. I didn't know what to do. A little frail little guy. I mean, just a little bitty guy. Just just tiny and skinny and, you know, just sick all the time. And today, he is in Israel. Oh, he's still alive. A, oh, he's, he's a junior in college now. Wow. Yes. It's in the book. You can read about him. Even a picture of him is in the book. And he, uh, and there's been a lot of people like that. Mm -hmm. Without me saying much about it, if you read, you'll find out that after the lady came, uh, a gift came. And that was the ability to, to help others. But I don't know how it works. I have no clue. It's over my head. I just do what I can, but I have seen some miracles and people would testify to it. So, so all that with her. Yeah. I mean, so I want to go into now, um, before we move into some of the other stuff I wanted to kind of talk about that. I think a lot of people have questions about in this, you know, whole storyline. Um, right. So when I came to visit you that night, like I told my listeners, I didn't expect that I would see anything, you know, but when, so we went there, we sat down, had great conversation. You showed me a lot of, of videos and things that you have captured. Um, and it was just getting me so excited. I was like, oh my gosh, this is just, you know, if I see something tonight, you know, even if it's just one one little orb, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be happy, you know, because um, I've never experienced anything like that before. And so, you know, the sun started setting, and we go out there and uh, we sit down. And what I will say, because so, a lot of people will put this as, you know, we're we're dealing with the devil, we're dealing with bad energy, you know, that kind of stuff. When you went out there, you were connecting in a way where you were calling to the Holy Spirit. Um, you were praying. Yep. Um, because you you explained this this woman as like the Holy Spirit, right? Well, that's how I envision her, yeah. Yeah. And so yeah. you definitely believe in this Holy Trinity, you know. Um, yep. And her. Absolutely. Yes. And. So as that started happening, you know, we're looking up at the sky and all of a sudden we see these, these smaller orbs, you know, which initially it could have been possibly like a satellite if I was looking at it in a certain way, you know, like it was off into the distance and I could have in my mind probably rationalized that this is probably a satellite, right? But then as the night started going and the energy started getting a lot more, um, uh, advanced, then all of a sudden, you know, it was just, it was like, 
it was like it was crazy because all of a sudden we would see something you know streak across the sky in a certain color you know and then we would see a flash like in the sky where it was like a you know like i just remember i looked over and you guys weren't looking over but i just had this feeling i needed to look over towards your tree and i looked over at your tree which was maybe like 50 feet from me and right when i looked there was a very large yellow orb that was probably the size of like a soccer ball right in front of the tree and then it just went away and i was like oh my gosh I saw that and that was you, you know, you were like confirming that, yes, like this is, this is real. You know, you, you did see that. And, and then I remember you guys were like, oh my gosh. And I look over and in the sky, there's a very large white ball of light, like in the sky. And it was like, it was unbelievable. We were all like, whoa, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And then, um, you know, you had your, your little recorder out and I remember you were letting us look through that so we could get a better look at these things and you recorded it. So I'm just so people are aware and they can't say that, like, I didn't see anything. Um, Chris actually shared this video with me afterwards, but this was me looking through the night camera and seeing one of these orbs. And you will see, this is clearly not a satellite. This definitely is an orb. So I'm going to show people, if you're watching on Rockfin or YouTube, I'm going to share this video really quick. It's a really short video, but you can clearly see it and you can also hear my voice. So one thing about that video to think about was you had the camera, right? You had it in your hand. Yep. And when we when I pointed it out to you, it was way bigger, way brighter, and sitting there stationary. Yes. And so I had to reach up on top of the camera and find the record button and push it for you so you could record that. <laughs> and it had already dimmed down and started going, you know, after we started recording. But it was a whole lot more impressive than what you see here. Yeah, you kind of only get to see the ending part of Tell it. But the tail end of it. Yeah, but you can see, you can hear in my voice how fascinated I am. Let's look at yeah. it. <laughs> so you could, I'm going to rewind that really quick because you can see right there. Like that's not. Yeah, and it was three, four times bigger or much larger and brighter than that when you first saw it. Yes. And you can see it go just back appeared. into the tree there. Like this is thing about far it, out it, into it, the it, sky. Yeah, it just appeared out of thin air. I mean, it didn't fly over. It was not high, very high above the trees anyhow, but it just appeared out of thin air and there it was. Yes. And that was just one of the ones that we saw. Like we were out there for, uh, a couple of hours um and i i just remember i left there and i was just like oh my gosh like i've never prayed more than i prayed that night you know and i felt very thankful and i felt very like just con like connected in a way where i was i didn't feel like i was experiencing any evil enter energy like any negative energy especially even just being around you i have a really good intuition with people and i have a, you know i'm i'm a very emotional person i can read people pretty well and my whole experience with you has was always very uh you know i didn't get any negative energy around you or just even in the experience um and so that's that so for people who know, I did an episode before this on our aliens demons, um, because there is so much narrative coming out. Obviously, this whole thing with the UFO hearings coming out, we just had one in Mexico um, where they presented two aliens bodies, species. Um, so there's a lot of information out there around this. And 
there's a lot and I even kind of discussed, you know, is there a possibility, you know, that this is tied to the occult or any of that kind of stuff? Um, having that experience with you had kind of opened my mind to thinking, is there different aspects to this? Or is this all collectively one thing? And that's one thing I wanted to ask you was because you believe that these are angels, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and nobody's more of an expert than I am about this. I have, I am the expert when it comes to this phenomenon because I have the data and I share it. And, and I'm not boasting to say that. Nobody would know the magnitude. If you read the book, you'll, you'll hear about me at the, the, the Monroe Institute mm -hmm. where they're scanning my brain. If you watch the History Channel, the last episode, What's not told there, what you can see is for seven nights, they were here seven days, 15 crew members for History Channel. We filmed for seven days. We have so much data. We had 35 orbs one night, all verified by artificial intelligence. They had these $250,000 machines, two of them set up here that could identify anything from a, a nut and a bolt floating in the space. It's hooked to NORAD, hooked to the government database. But what the most important thing to, to hear here is we filmed hundreds of orbs in six nights. Well, the last night they were here, we decided to move 20 miles away because when you watch the show, you'll hear the, 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 the host at the beginning say, well, we've investigated Wilson Ranch, Skinwalker Ranch, uh, this ranch, that ranch, this Wilson, all these ranches. But now this is about a person. It's always believed that, that the phenomenon is attached to something haunted, a haunted a property or a house or whatever. So um, they wanted to make the point to where it wasn't attached to my property. I can go anywhere in this house. And I do. I go to California. We may, we, it appears in California in front of witnesses. It doesn't matter. Um, so we went 20 miles away. And this time they wanted to do the brain scan. The same thing I wrote about in the book. So I'm sitting there total silent. And this is something for the Christians to listen to. All the religious people pay attention. You've always been taught that the devil cannot read your thoughts. That's a common denominator in the whole religious world. Only God can read your thoughts. Satan can. He can whisper in your ear, right? I'm praying totally silent while there's three cameras pointing at me, sitting in a chair, 20 miles away in the middle of the, at 9 o'clock at night, 20 degrees out, and 40 yards away, or 40 feet away under a shelter are four scientists with three cameras pointing at the screen while they're monitoring my brain. They told me not to move or not to say anything if I see something or suspect anything because they want to see how my brain reacts to it. They said, just point. I said, okay. So I went through a silent prayer. I said, Lord, thank you for allowing me to share your presence to the whole world on camera this week. We, nobody films this stuff. It, it doesn't happen by, it, it's not accidental. You either get, uh, you're allowed to, to, to see it or you're not. And forever it's been, you're not. So I said, thank you for that. But this time tonight, let's try something different. I'd be honored if you would appear next to me in the forest. And I'm saying this silently in prayer. I'm not saying it out loud. Nobody hears what I'm saying. I'm giving you something that I haven't talked about publicly. So immediately, my daughter's standing next to me. I'm sitting in this little chair, and it's a real low beach chair. I mean, I'm only a foot off the ground, right? I'm freezing to death. Can't speak. Saying a prayer asking the lady or the Holy Spirit, whatever you can imagine the Holy Spirit as, it's a spirit, is it a man or a woman? It doesn't really matter, it's God. 
right? God is God and in the Holy Trinity. Um, immediately I felt the presence. So I turned and I looked back behind me and here comes the orb out of the sky. Flash, flash, flash. Comes all the way down to the river, which is about 40 feet below me. I'm up high on the bank and the river is way down there. The orb comes straight down over the river, gets about eight foot off the ground and comes right up through the woods beside us. I couldn't speak. I couldn't tell that I'm seeing this thing. All I could do is point. And all the cameras are looking at me. So my daughter has to tell them, look, there's the orb. And so they filmed it as it went right up through the woods, right beside us. And sadly, they only showed a little clip of that. Yeah. There's a whole lot much more uh, amazing footage of that orb that they didn't share because it would go between and around the trees. And when it went behind one big oak tree, it vanished and it come back out. Wow. But they knew right away by observing the scientists there that we just did something the first time in history. And we did. We we changed history with that film. No surprise, and it's, it's trending number one in history right now, that show. But um, Yeah, it's a fascinating show. You guys definitely should watch it if you're interested in this case. But it came through prayer. And this is this is the key. I reported this thing in 2007 to 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 move on, and um, by 2008 they did their show. And it was that day then I told them, "What do you think it was?" I said, "Angels." Why do you say that? Because I was praying. I was sick. I was wanting to die. I called on God for help, and these balls of fire came out of the sky. You want to call them UFOs, you can. Which we've also heard me, about in the Bible. Yeah. Well, uh, there's a whole lot there that's been hidden from us. And I can I can share some of that. I would love that. And will at some point. Yeah. Uh, just Google the word cloud in the Bible. Cloud. Just research the word cloud. C-L-O-U-D in the Bible. And what, what I was told there by Dr. Diana Pasolka, which is... Uh, a religious scholar has access to the Vatican, been in the archives, told me that she saw firsthand the original translation of the word cloud. She's seen it herself. She said there are two translations. What they did was, is you have a cloud that rains on you, right? They took a word that was dealing with the phenomena and made it look like a rain, uh, a weather event. For example, you have uh, you have John the Baptist baptizing Jesus in the Jordan River. And what does it say? I think it's in Luke or Matthew. It says, and a shiny, bright cloud appeared right over top of them and spoke. So you got a talking cloud here, right? <laughs> said, this is my son, listen to him. This is throughout the whole Bible, Matthew 24. Jesus said, when I come back, I'm coming on the clouds of heaven or in the clouds of heaven. Mark 14, Matthew 24, Matthew 26. Hundreds of descriptions in the Bible. Exodus, when the children of Israel left Egypt, right? In the desert. It says, and an angel of the Lord went before the children of Israel in a pillar of a cloud. Now, an angel is in this pillar-shaped cloud, pillar being a pylon or a column pillar, mm -hmm. like, you know, a front porch column, long cylindrical. This cloud was on fire at night. She got a burning cloud here. It gave them shade by day, and it fed them manna every morning. For 38 years, wherever the cloud went, the people camped underneath that. So you see, this was, this was erased or, or mistranslated intentionally. And I know it was. It's proven to me by these, these uh, religious scholars, some of the top ones in the country. Wow. They know this. 
And so Google, uh, go to Bible Gateway and pull up the word cloud and look at all the talking clouds, all the shining clouds. So, you know, on Mount Sinai, it was a cloud on fire that came down over Mount Sinai and smoked up the top of the mountain and spoke to, to Moses, mm -hmm. right? So I would say uh, everybody should look at that and understand. But it's always been a spiritual thing to me. Uh, is it alien? I don't think so, because it doesn't act that way. Why would an alien want to come to the Cape Fear River with me crying out to God and say, help me? And it does. Why, what would be the reason? If it came here from some far planet, you would think it needs gasoline or supplies and would say, hello, we're here. Mm -hmm. but this isn't the way this phenomenon works. You saw how it works. Mm -hmm. You saw me say a prayer. And then suddenly the phenomenon starts appearing, flashes in the sky, comes to the trees around us. It comes out of the sky and appears right in front of us. Yeah, there was no witness. darkness around anything that we did, what we said, right. anything. And that's that's why this significant thing, because uh, I have been on the fence a lot about is this something that's being ushered in by dark forces that are happening in this world to throw us off, you know, um, you know, our path with God, you know, things like that. So that's why right. when I, you know, this encounter happened, I'm listening to your story. There was things that kind of stood out to me too, about just even scripture and how it talks about all these miracles and these things that have happened in the Bible. But when we right. presently see them, in our lives happening, a lot of people want to just chalk it off as the devil. And it's like, if these things could have happened long time ago in the Bible, and it's, you know, they talked about it, how, how do people then start to differentiate between this happening from God or is this the devil? Because I think a lot of people like to just put it into that camp, especially from religious backgrounds. Um, well, the people of religion tend to give the devil too much power. Why is it? It's always the devil. Well, he has no power. He has no power over God. He has no power over you if you have God in your heart. Right. And surely I want to be I want to be corrected. If I'm praying to God and the devil's coming, why would I even pray? Why would I want to 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 pray and, and the devil come mm -hmm. you know you see what i mean it, it's just the craziest thing i've ever heard right uh, and i thought this it, i think it's time everybody wakes up and see that maybe god's coming back maybe the times right now in this world are so crazy that god has decided to might he just might wake us up and i think that's more about what's happening you're looking for uh, something from heaven. Maybe it's right here in front of you. Well, that's kind of what I wanted to ask you next was, you know, why is all, it seems like your story is very significant and it's, it's ramping up. There's a lot more people are going to start hearing more about your story because you've got a lot of stuff going on. And we obviously yep. see this transition in our own culture with the government trying to, you know, come out, with this disclosure um to all everybody. alien 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 yeah everything is is uaps aliens and you know uh, coming from other dimensions and things like that and do you think the government has any idea what this is or do you think this is separate from what you're experiencing i'm honestly between you and i and you've seen some of my connection to the government. I have a lot of connection there all the way, you know, I can't even begin to tell you, but you know. Yes. Um, and in the book, you'll read from government officials. Honestly, they don't know. That's why they don't have answers. They, they don't know. They don't know what it is. They know it's conscience-based. They know it's spiritual base. Conscience meaning, what is consciousness? It's God. That's what the very term consciousness means, is God, right? Mm -hmm. Creator, the source. Um, so they know it's conscience-based. They know it's spiritual. 
They know that it has nothing to do with them whatsoever. It does not, it, it will not interact with them at all, except on a cat and mouse way. It toys with them. If they have these nuclear weapons, it can go and turn them on and off at will as it decides to and says, look, you're not going to do this. We're going to show you you can't. So something is conscience-based. Um, you know, who are they? Um, all I can tell you is they answer, they answer prayer. Mm -hmm. and that's how they do it. And it don't have to be verbally. It can be silent. But you saw that. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I don't claim to know all the answers, but I claim, uh, I claim to, to be an expert in it anyhow because I have 17 years of documented evidence mm -hmm. or experience in this, nearly 17 years. So why would uh, you, if we have people in the government and... I think it's very much that we are having a hard time under because we can't even in our own physical, you know, sense of reality can even, you know, understand any of this stuff that we've we can't physically replicate. We can't physically, you know, um, we can't just see it. You know, not everybody sees it. And I think that that's kind of, you know, the government understands that. But if, if this is a, a consciousness or if this is spirit and these things are uh, beings, what would you say that if, if we have crashed craft and we have potentially these extraterrestrial bodies or what they have claimed, you know, NHI biologics that they have captured, how do you think that these things are, how, how do you think we have that in physical form that we can study and we can, you know, well, I can answer that very clearly. Uh, for one, there's zero evidence of that. You haven't seen any bodies. The ones from Mexico are old. They debunked them years ago. Those same things went through um, uh, all the scrutiny to all the DNA evidence. The United States scientists researched it, and they all deemed it a fraud or a fake. Yeah, and I haven't so I looked think, into those yet. So I I was kind of taken aback when they had like uh, x-rays of the bodies and, and all these things that they were presenting. And, you know, I haven't really researched into it yet. But uh, if it's real, then it's real. But until it's proven otherwise, then I have no conversation there. I haven't seen an alien. I've never seen an alien. I see a metallic disc. I see metallic balls. I see balls of light. I film it. I have daytime, nighttime, doesn't matter. Um, it's easier to get at night than the day. But um, I'm going to stay reserved as far as labeling it alien. Um, I'll label it more spiritual because that's the way it reacts. That's the way it acts with you. That's the way it acted with your boyfriend. Mm -hmm. uh, and the hundreds of people that come here constantly. This is not new. We have witnesses, government witnesses. We've done it on television, and we're going to do it more this year on TV in a much broader way and bigger. And um, so I'm presenting the evidence for my case. The government's doing a lot of talking, but they're not presenting anything. Right. And as far as metal, um, I've found metal that dripped from the orbs. I've been tested with other metal that look manufactured. And it was a NASA scientist. It's in the book. You can read about it. Uh, was, I was working with stem cell research with this guy for two years. I worked on the first stem cell patient ever. Why did NASA come get me to work on stem cell research or one of the scientists there? Why would the government investigate me so much? Why would they always, uh, you know, they're still coming. They call me every day. I have, it don't ever stop. So why even would they need me? I was there. Yeah, even while you were there. I asked NASA, I said, you got all these spaceships. You got all the telescopes. You got all the money in the world, all the scientists. Why are you at my house scaring my wife and children? Because we were afraid back then. 
that the men in black was going to come get us. And somebody knocks on our door with NASA's tags, you know, me, we were scared. So I straight up asked him, why, why are you at my house? As he's testing me with metal, he said, we see it. We see it all the time. We have cameras, but I can tell you it has nothing to do with us. It will always be in front of us and ahead of us and is very elusive, but we know it likes you and we know it follows you and we want to do a, uh, understand why. We'd like to study this with you. So that was early on, way back, um, and, you know, 16 years ago. And so we're still there. We're still working with a lot of these people. We're, we're studying it greater now than ever because the ability came for it to appear when I ask it to. Yeah. And that's what's happening. So I have a question to uh, just with all the people that you are connected with in NASA, CIA, the government, a uh, very, DOD, very, DOD, some of the DOD, highest, all of them. yeah, you are very well connected throughout with all of these, uh, you know, very, um, high people with high clearances, people who have worked in this. So a lot of people have trust issues with the government and people who are in the know and, and the CIA, NASA, and, and all that stuff. People are going to hear that and they're going to think that there might be something that you're a part of with their agenda. What would you say about that? Well, you know, I don't know that, uh, I don't know that the government has an agenda, but maybe they do. Uh, I think what they're really more worried about is they don't understand the phenomenon and they would rather discourage us uh, of getting involved with it because they don't know what it is. And that would be all I would say, if there is anything there, that would be their stance because they really don't know. And, and when you're talking about the, the, the type of people that's been here, have uh, anyone in the audience look up the senior service for the U.S. government, the SES, not the GS, not general service, but senior service. And there have been uh, at least three of just a handful of those at my home or in my presence and have experienced it with me the phenomenon and I have videos to prove that they're sitting here with me and you can hear them talking and you can see I'm at their house in Dover, Delaware um, or, or Rehoboth Beach, Delaware, or even here in my yard with the head of the DIA, uh, DIA here. And you heard that mm -hmm. conversation um, and they all got to see it and, and change their their mind. So why are they here? Because they want to know. They, they don't know. Government really doesn't know what's going on. They know it's non-human. They know it's in total control. They know it can, it can play games. Um, it can literally trick you. It can do a lot of things, but I can say this of the literally thousands of people that write me. And I have uh, every day a list this long. I get up and it takes me half the day to respond to everybody. This is every day of my life. And I try to talk to everyone. Of all the people that come here, if there were uh, a thousand, let's say 999 of those thousand people will all tell me the same thing every time. They come here because they want to, or they call me to tell me their story. So a lot of elderly women or men, or even young people have seen something, but they, they don't know why. They had, they had, they got scared. They saw lights fly by the front of the car and all of a sudden it's the devil, you know, because the belief systems, your belief system limit uh, reality a lot. So they come to me, what happened? This beautiful 80 year old lady, my husband died and orbs are appearing in my yard and in my house. Why is that? Always the same. The 999 would tell me every time I lost my mama, I lost my daddy, I lost a child. 
Uh, I lost my husband. I lost my wife. Um, I got sick with cancer, nearly died, and this ball of light just come into my room and appeared. And it's always that way. Always. Show me the evidence. Show me the anal probes. Show me the physical ailments. Show me all the nasty, dirty stuff. that You hear about that, but you never hear about the positive stuff. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you 90% of all the reports are positive. 95% of all of them. You only hear about the few negatives that's out there. And are they real? Are they true? Where's the evidence? Did you figure that out in a regression? Did or you actually see where you can see right. things can be planted into your brain? Like a lot. That's Let's what just, I hear a lot of stories when with people who have been abducted is that they end up finding out what happened to them through a series of hypnosis uh, sessions that, and you know, maybe they are remembering certain things, but I also think that sometimes it's poor evidence. Yeah. There's no evidence. There. Right. So you can't, you can't trust in any of that. You have to have evidence to move the ball down the court. And in the alien lineup, I have seen zero evidence. I have seen metal. And what's that about? My friend at NASA told me, Chris, this metal you're holding, and you can read about the metal in the book. I've dealt with more of that than most anyone, and I'm not done dealing with it. I dealt with it in the book in the last chapter. It was sent by courier to the Monroe Institute just for me to be tested with. This is in, in the book, and that'll happen again this year. So I'm constantly dealing with this stuff, right? Um, my friend at NASA said, Chris, the isotopes, the isotopes on this metal says that it originated 50 million light years away. They can track how far out in space that an object comes by the isotopes, the rate of decay, right? Oh, so sorry, it came from sorry, 50 Chris, million. I'm going to have you back up really quick. I lost, I lost a connection with you there for a second. Um, okay. Let's start off with the, go back to, um, you were talking about the last chapter you were in the, in the metal. Yeah, so in the last chapter, you'll see I was tested again uh, with metal at the Monroe Institute, we talk about, it, and how I could blindly see in a blind study, they would put a, a, a sealed um, container in my hand with a helmet on my head, totally blind to what they had given me. Even the scientists given me did not know what was in these containers. Only the people that brought it there, the scientists. And I would every time uh, show them that this, this is a living, this is the metamaterial. Uh, even without me knowing it was metamaterial, I knew it was, uh, it was alive, it was either an insect or uh, a living uh, structure of some kind, living something. And the metal that you had in your hand, you felt like it was living? Yeah. Okay. Even under blindfold. Wow. I did this in the Monroe Institute. I could tell that it was something alive inside this container. And they're like, oh my God, you nailed it. Uh, I could even see the colors glowing. Wow. So, uh, but this metal, according to my friend at NASA, is a gift. He said they can come. I'm losing you again, Chris. Sorry. You said you said you this me? metal came from oh, 50 million I'm... light years. We're good. Can you get me? You hear me? Yeah. So this we metal good? came from 50 so, million light years away? Away. And in two hours time, it can make that trip in two hours time. And he said straight up, they don't wow. crash. It, it doesn't happen. They don't crash. She said, do you think that something that can I'm create kidding. this can come from that far that quick would crash here when they got here? No, it doesn't happen. So the material was given to us as a gift. So whatever I'm told, whatever they have in possession was a gift to us. It wasn't by, it wasn't by a crash. So why would they give us a gift? Why did that happen in 1941? 
the year we got into the war against Japan, we were there were seven or eight of these things found across the United States. This is this is new. You can research it and find out. Even others talk about it. That there was Cape Girardeau, Missouri. There was in New Mexico. There was in Fort Bragg, North Carolina. There was in Ohio. There was in different parts of the country. They located like eight of these things. Right as World War II started. We didn't even have a toaster back then. We didn't have anything, even an AM radio, right? But they created an atomic bomb that stopped the the whole war within four years. Mm -hmm. So did they use that to help develop that? There's no telling. But there's it was given to us as a gift. It didn't crash. And that's what I'm I'll maintain, I've been told by some of the highest authorities and it makes sense. Why Why would they be here investigating me if they had all the answers? They had all these craft that they can make fly and travel to Mars and back. Right. You know, it's all wishful thinking. Well, one thing I want to... So. so we are going to be wrapping up here soon, but there's one thing that I want to talk about that really fascinated me about... I had, I had heard this on a, a podcast that you... Um, we're on and you had said that you know because we're all thinking like why is this happening now obviously we're ramping up for something because now it's becoming I mean I never thought that I would live in a time where we were just openly discussing this and people wouldn't think you're absolutely crazy I mean some people right. might still think that because they you know want to live in their own world that makes them comfortable um, and right. That's yeah. Fun. And so we're now in a spot right now where we have now the government openly talking about it. And now we have whistleblowers coming forth. And now we have uh, people saying that this stuff is real. It's out there. And it used to just be taboo, crazy talk. So obviously we're, we're hitting a point in society where we are turning, we are starting to shift the consciousness of what is possible and what is reality? Uh, what is this reality that we're living in? And what do you think is going on right now? Because you had discussed that this woman is going to be presenting herself, and you know, to the world. And I want to—I want you to talk more about that because in the past you have, and we have—we didn't really touch base on this, but it's, it talks about it in the book. But you have predicted events happening, you know, very significant events happening, uh, you know, in the world in the past. And you had predicted those things from happening before it happened. And you were very Correct. spot on. Um, yep. And so just like COVID, I predicted COVID in 2019. Wow. Ten times I went public and I said I didn't know it was COVID. But um uh, what I did know is we had trouble coming because something came out of the sky, an orb, hovered over my pond for 30 minutes. I'm 25 feet from it. I filmed it for 18 minutes. The first 10, 15 minutes, I couldn't film it. I, I thought I was, but and it was really put on a show. You still have me? I know it's glitching there. Oh, hold on one second. Okay, I have you. Okay. <laughs> okay. So anyhow, um, I pre this, this 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 celestial being spoke to me in 2019 on Easter. It's always Easter. Something happens major on Easter, and I even showed you a video of something with wings flew right over my head, glowing orange. Right. Unbelievable. I, yes. I have yeah, I haven't shared this publicly for the audience to see, but on Easter of 2021, no, 2022, I was presented with uh, the thought to write this book. And I walked outside and said, should I write this book? Is this what you would have me do? And an orb appears over the pond. But then we look up and coming down is something with wings glowing orange and red. And then suddenly... It starts flapping its wings and it's I now saw blowing this thing, white. Guys, this was like, yeah, this blew me away when I watched that yeah. video. 
so um <laughs> yeah i forgot where i was going with that but long story short the the, the being told me that uh you need to get out and tell the world that trouble's coming that's what it said in 2019 easter 2019 trouble's coming Tell the people to lock their doors and store up, not to come out until it passes. The trouble's on the way. And so immediately out of an eight-year, uh, I had been real sick during those days with rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, I wasn't talking for about eight years. I hardly spoke. Immediately, I went out and started calling podcasters. I need to talk. I'm ready to talk. I'm ready to interview. So I did 10 interviews in a row back to back. Some of the biggest names out there. Uh, even into 2020, uh, 2020, I went out to San Francisco and did an in-person interview, and I did one with Jimmy's Church. And you can get those and hear me talking about store up your goods, don't come out of the house. And as soon as 2020 hit, here's COVID, right? Came in 2019. And I would imagine it was already a loose at Easter of 2019. And but I was correct there and on many other things from earthquakes to the things that have been verified. But it, was, it wasn't a prediction, it was reporting what I was told from up here. They communicate with me and we proved that on television that this thing is communicating. My brain is receiving information. You hear the scientists say, he's not saying a word, he's totally calm. But his brain is receiving information from that orb as it flew by. So they're speaking to me. I hear them. I hear them in images. It's like telepathic and in motion. I feel it and I hear it. But I hear it the way I hear it, I see it. And um, so they told me that. It was the phenomenon that warned about COVID. It was the phenomenon that um, has told me many other things that i spoke about and they come true and so all i'm saying is i think everybody should pay attention to what's happening with this right now uh it's not the devil um it very well could be heaven trying to wake us up it could be angelic beings trying to to wake the people up to help avoid what's about to happen to this whole planet if we don't change our way and, and some goodness come uh, there's no telling where we're going to be in a few years everything looks disastrous right now to everyone right I mean, the, the weather wars and you know they're just more fear and more fear and more fear and now aliens but i'm saying something up here is is hearing us and uh, is trying to introduce itself to the world so do you think that it will present itself to the world? I mean, yeah. obviously yeah, it, the government- It already is. Yes. I mean, you definitely already see is. a ramp up in these things. Now, you know, even the military is talking about how these things are now common. They they brief on it when they're, uh, you know, the Air Force before they like head out, they brief on that. They talk about it beforehand, you know, if they encounter anything. And now we're starting to put in place all of these systems for people to report on it because there is so much happening it's ramping up and right so what do you what do you think it's going to i mean do you think that these things are going to present themselves at a point where nobody can deny it anymore yep already is happening now but it's going to get so um i i have a sneaky suspicion that the lady uh, is liable to appear to us all, uh, maybe uh, to the world, maybe to where I can film it, but I'm being drawn. And I, every time I've predicted these things, I've been right. And I can tell you in the kids in the Fatima story, everybody that's not aware of Fatima should read it. Uh, and Guadalupe and these different uh, lords of France. Uh, but Fatima, for example, the three little kids that were seeing this little lady, this glowing lady, every day were ridiculed by their whole community, by the church, by the people. They'd labeled them crazy and so on. And this happened for a good period of time. And suddenly the lady says, okay, 
tell everybody to come out here October the 13th and I'm going to show them all. I'm going to appear to the whole crowd. And so 80,000 people, 80,000 went outside, two villages were. And this is where the Catholic Church deemed it the miracle of the sun. They claimed, oh, the sun moved about. But the 80,000 people said, no, the setting sun appeared, rotating fire going around it. Orbs appeared all around them, and out came a little lady about three and a half, four feet tall. That's the real story. The official story is a little different than that. Um, but she said, I'm going to come and I'm going to show myself to everybody. And that's basically what I'm understanding may happen. Uh, I have a, a belief that there's a good chance that could happen, that she comes back and uh, much more. So you th do you so, think that this is biblical? Yes. Do you think that I've the book that of Revelation is, has a lot of truth or do you think that's been manipulated? No, the lady told me in 2012, and I'm on record for this. She told me, and there, and you can read about this in the book, about what she told me, what would happen. She gave me an alignment, which ends up being 2026, right? I did this 12 years ago. Now the government and everybody's talking about 2026 is going to be great. Um, 2027, something's going to happen. There's going to be a major happening. Well, it's because I said that in two, 12 years ago. 10, 11 years ago, I came out and told this. I even put it in writing to two Air Force generals at the Pentagon. They requested me to do so, what she told me. And um, I think she's coming back. I think that same, uh, yeah, revelation, she said that there are people in power that are scripting the book of Revelations to bring about the end of the world. They're making it happen. And it's pretty obvious that it's been made to happen all along. Just like Jesus, when he rode into Jerusalem on the Palm Sunday. Why did they do that? Why did he ride a donkey into Jerusalem on that day? Because the night before, they all uh, talked about the scripture. And I think it was either uh, Jeremiah where he talks about he rode in on an ass. So they scripted it. They went and got him a donkey and rode in just like the scripture said he would. So it's playing out. The book of Revelations yeah. is playing out. But, but the good thing about it is we win. In the end, we win. They don't. The darkness doesn't win. The darkness will be exposed. I think it's happening now. And in um, and, and, and the time, we win. So, yeah, I think that it's very ironic that we are in a position or in a time right now where they it does seem like they're taking a lot more effort in disclosing and dropping this to the world, almost as if it's something that they know is going to happen in the future. And so they're preparing the world for this because it would be crazy if nobody knew anything about this and then all of a sudden it happened i think this is a it i think it's a interesting you know time that we live in and how all this stuff is kind of rolling out and kind of preparing the the consciousness of people for something greater happening so it's very ironic it, it, that this the is the book all of revelations right now yeah it's being scripted yeah yeah. One world and government, I mean, if you, one world currency, all that's happening in front of us right now. You know, all yes. that. And um, so, there's no, there's no, uh, there's no coincidence in that at all. Well, and there's no coincidence wanna, in the heavens coming to Earth now. Yes, I think that with this conversation, it's been so enlightening in a lot of aspects that I've had just regarding, uh, you know, my own existential beliefs and crisis that I've been going through because there's a lot of, there's a lot of narratives running out there and it can be very hard to navigate and it can push somebody to a point where they don't believe in anything. Um, and they have a hard time trusting things. And I think that's all done deliberately, um, by not 
the best people out there, but um, just having this conversation with you, experiencing it myself, um, reading your book and giving myself a different perspective of what this could be. And it's comforting to know that this is all leading towards something better for humanity. Yeah. Um, follow the evidence, follow the evidence. That's all we can say. All yeah. that other is talk. There's no evidence. Right. If they got it, bring it out and show us. Other than that, it's just a smoke screen for the next hundred years, like it has been for the last 70 or 80. I mean, they still talk about Wilson documents or they talk about the Majestic 12 documents, something that happened in the 40s, right? Mm -hmm. Big hairy deal. That, that's in the past. Let's see uh, all this now. Show me the evidence. And we haven't seen it. Yeah. And most likely never will. Right. Ever. Well, I well, I just want to say thank you so much, Chris, for coming on my podcast and sharing your story. I think it's I think it's an important story and I think your story is something that has been um verified. It's a fascinating story. I've experienced my experiences with you. I can vouch for a lot of the things that you're saying and just my overall experience just being around you and the energy and in all the things that I have seen. I don't see any negative forces. I don't see any evil behind any of this. Um, but if people want to hear more of your story, I highly suggest getting the book UFO of God. Um, also going to your website. I'll put a link of all that stuff in the show notes so people can find you. Um, but this was an amazing conversation. And I'm yeah. so glad that I got to have, you know, this conversation with you again. I know we've talked a lot <laughs> about other stuff, but I'm just so thankful that, you know, I can have a, you know, learn all about your story and have a personal experience with you. Yeah. Well, I'm honored you came and uh, you can come back when you next time you come back, it'll even get even better. I know. The even, more people come here, the more friendly it becomes. Well, one thing I want to point out, too, before we sign off is, you know, I even the next night I went home and I was like eager to just sit out in my back porch and watch the sky. And I'm texting you and I'm seeing these things, too, at the same time that you're seeing them. So it was like mm -hmm. once I got to experience that phenomenon with you, I was able to come home without you being there and experiencing the phenomenon again, which I was like, oh my gosh, this is unbelievable. This is just amazing. Um, and so, you know, that's what you have, like other people have stated they've experienced with you as well. Um, yeah, that's happened to hundreds, hundreds of people. In fact, um, I'm getting writing, people writing me every day saying they read my book, now they're seeing orbs. Yeah. After reading the book, it awakens them. You know, once you get a truth switch, this is the best way we can describe it. You have a switch in your head, a truth switch, which means you're no longer on the fence. You no longer doubt. You know it's real. You've seen it. You've experienced it. Once that happens, then the whole world opens up to you. Yeah. You begin to see it. And uh, reading the book has caused a lot of people a lot of people to start experiencing the phenomenon because they know when they read it, they know it, it, it yeah. resonates with them. It's not the devil. It's not, uh, and everybody quit giving the devil so much power. I mean, yeah, it's ridiculous. we definitely Everything's do. We like to blame everything the on the devil. devil. Right. <laughs> we do. Yeah. And I think that, yeah. yeah, I think a lot of people like to live in fear or they, you know, it's, I think it's honestly a narrative that gets used so often that, you know, people like to blame everything that they're uncomfortable with on the devil. So I think everybody uh, needs to wake up and realize there's more happening right now. Maybe heaven, maybe the spiritual beings, the angels are taking interest in this planet because of what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. And I would listen to what I'm saying there because this is exactly what's happening. That's why they're coming. That's what they're saying to me. That's what's going on. It's, it's because 
the world is a scary place right now. Mm. And, uh, well, and it's everybody's a, it's in a amazing time to be alive. I got to yeah. say, this is, I mean, if this is the reality and we are living in the book of Revelation, the end, the biblical times, I think that, you know, what a time to be alive and it, be able yeah. to experience this huge shift in the world. Um, yeah. But if you guys are interested, make sure that you buy the book. Highly suggest it. UFO of God. Go to UFO dot, UFO of God dot com um, to learn more about Chris as well. And everything will be in the show notes. Um, we are going to sign off for now. Just want to say thank you so much again, Chris, for coming on, sharing your story. And I hope that your story continues to impact everyone else out there like it did me. I appreciate that. And, and on my website, if you go there, you can find my social media accounts, especially Instagram. And there you can see other videos, quite a few. Yes, he has a ton of videos and pictures all on his Instagram. Um, so I will put all that in the show notes. And I guess for now, guys, uh, also look him up. He's got a lot of podcasts out there. You can hear a lot more stories about Chris. All right. We will sign off for now. Thank you so much for tuning in. Bye-bye.